So I've said it before on my channel, and I'm going to say it again. You don't need expensive equipment to start in macro photography. You don't need to go out and get yourself a macro lens. You don't need a full frame camera. So in this macro adventure, I'm going to do something a little bit different than the others that I've done. So this is my Canon 400D. It's a 10 megapixel camera. I have the 50mm f1.8 version 2 on 65mm of extension tubes along with a manual Yong No speed light. This is that old, it doesn't even have an LCD screen on the back. Okay, I'm going to take this out now in the field. I'm going to show you that you don't need the latest, greatest full frame camera or even a mirrorless camera to do macro photography. So join me on this macro adventure. Okay, so we've come across some kind of beetle. I have no idea what it is. We'll have to ID it when we get back home. But what I'm doing, I'm just maneuvering this stone around to try and get him into a position that I like. And then I'm going to use the green of this foliage here for the background. So my camera settings, I'm at one two hundredth of a second on the shutter speed. We have an f-stop of f8 and ISO 100. This camera, you ain't going anywhere above 200 ISO. So because you, I'm on an older camera, I can't push the ISO very far. So normally with the other camera, I'd push the ISO up so I can expose the background. In this case, just bring the background closer to you and you'll get the exposure. So I've just found a crab spider. This is the first one I've found this year. So this is going to be exciting stuff. Now these guys are ugly. So if you suffer from arachnophobia, you might want to skip this bit. So I've set my f-stop to f14. Let's see if we can get a picture of this guy. I've just found this snail shell here and I'm going to place that on a rock and I'm just going to take a picture of it. If I don't break my neck in the meantime, this is where you really miss live view. We can get around it. I'm going to go to f2.8, drop the power on the flash, 
no idea what the pair is at because I don't have an LCD screen on this flash so I haven't got a clue. done is we found some little beetles that are on this dandelion flower here and when you're using a manual flash you're gonna have to guesstimate to begin with where the pair needs to be. I've had a guesstimation just here I'm gonna take a picture and I'm not photographing the beet I'm just photographing the flower and we can see if that's overexposed so I'll drop this down by I'm assuming it's two stops as again this, L, uh, this uh, screen on here is not very good. I'm going to take another picture. Okay, so my exposure is looking good now. And now I've got that set up, I'm free now to photograph these beetles. And what I'm doing is I'm putting my foot against the bank here. I've got my elbow onto my knee. And now I can just steady the camera and take some pictures. So macro photography isn't all about insects and creepy crawlies. I found some dead leaves here on the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of this, I'm going to turn it into black and white. So I'm at f16, one two hundred of a second, because I'm not using my tripod, and ISO 100. Now I'm not using my tripod because when I first started I didn't have a tripod, so I want to try and stick to that rule of thumb if we can. I'm just using the equipment I started with. So what I'm going to do, is I have my flash set to full power. I can actually tell that on this old flash. I'm going to hold the leaf up firmly in my hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overpower the sun and just use the flash to light this, um, this dead leaf. And with any luck, we should have a nice texture on the leaf and a black background. So there we go. Nice little abstract picture of a dead leaf. When it comes to macro photography, practicing on a familiar subject is always a good idea. Take the dandelions for instance, at this time of year they are everywhere, you can't fail to find one. So we're going to photograph this dandelion but we're going to add a unique twist to it. So what I'm going to do first, is I'm going to get my exposure correct first. And I'm going to be focusing on the centre of the dandelion. So what I'm going to do differently on this one is I've got myself a little syringe and I'm going to introduce a little water drop into the middle of the flower. There we go. So now I'm going to focus on that water drop and photograph that.
So if you want that real dreamy look to your image, what you can do is I'm going to turn off my flash. I'm going to drop my f-stop down to f1.8. And then we're going to take another picture. Dialing my shutter speed to compensate. So there you have it, some creative water drop photography. So there you have it, you don't need the latest, greatest full frame mirrorless camera to get started in macro photography. You don't need a dedicated macro lens to get started in macro photography. All I've got here is mostly second hand gear that you can get off eBay, but I've said it before and I'll say it again, nifty 50, extension tubes, that's all you need to start in macro photography. A TTL flash means that you won't have to dial in your pera manually, which means you'll be able to get the shot quicker and easier. A mirrorless camera means you can see the exposure through your EVF, which means you haven't got to keep chimping. So the latest, greatest equipment doesn't make you a better photographer, it just makes it easier. So that's it for this macro adventure. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. But as always, again, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. We've just come across a jumping spider unlike any other that I've seen before. It's completely black. Again, I ain't got a clue what the flash power is since I don't have much of a display. And he's gone. God damn it, man. I'll tell you what. It helps you to focus on the right one, don't it? So they have some creative water drop photography. <sighs> I forgot what I was going to say now. What was I going to say? Man, the outro is always the hardest. You'd, you'd think the photography would be the hardest part. Like 16. I have my tongue hanging out. What was my tongue hanging out for? So there you have it. You don't need the latest, greatest the thing, gang tank, bungalang, gang, gang, wong, ding, ding. What was that? That's it for this macro photography adventure. I have to cut B rolling because I ain't doing all that again. Manually dial in the exposure. No, it's power, isn't it? Exposure is the camera, you f it. Please subscribe, like, comment. I'll see you on the next video. Fuck, I almost did it, Dave. We could have gone to the pub.